Hey guys, welcome back to another Further Stats 2 revision video. In this video today, we're going to take a look at PDFs, or better known as probably density functions. So, let's jump straight into these questions. Um, we've got a mix here, some are a bit easier than others, um, but hopefully we kind of cover the main important parts with these questions. So, we've got the queuing time in minutes, X of a customer at a post office, which is modelled by the given PDF. So, the first part, we're just asked to show that k is equal to 4 divided by 6,561. So how do we do this? Well, what we need to consider here is the fact that the PDF, if we integrate that, the full area is equal to 1. So if we integrate this, so let's just write this out. So the integral of my PDF, f of x, with respect to x, this is equal to 1. Okay for the given domain so that's 0 to 9 here so all I need to do is integrate this given PDF so if we start doing that here as k is just a constant what I'm going to do is I'm going to use linearity and take that to the front this is between 0 and 9 for, so x times 81 so that's 81x and then x times minus x squared that gives me minus x cubed okay and we're doing this with respect to x so what we need to do now is integrate this and we know that this integral here times by k is equal to 1 so let's start integrating this so I want to get k lots 81x so add 1 to the power divided by the new power that's 81x squared divided by 2 x cubed, add 1 to the power divided by the new power, so that's minus x to the 4 divided by 4. This is between 0 and 9, and we know all of this is equal to 1. So just make it clear, this is part a still. So now, all we need to do is sum our limits in here. So sum in the 9 in first, so I get k lots of uh, 6 to the power of 61 over 2 minus 6, 5, 6, 1 over 4. If you plug the 0 in, both parts will be 0. So this would be 0 minus 0, so it's just 0. So we don't need to worry about that. So let's just plug in the 9 in there. So 8, 1 times 9 squared, and then 9 to the 4 here. And this is equal to 1. So we need to work out this bracket. And if we do that, what we get here is that this is k times 6,561 over 4 which is equal to 1 so at this stage here now um, simplifying this here this is 6561k over 4 is equal to 1 so times through by 4 and then divide by the coefficient of k here so in that case k is equal to so this would be 4 divided by 6, 5, 6, 1, which is exactly what we need. Okay, so that's what we're asked to show for part A. So there we go. So that's part A done. Part B, we're asked to use integration to find the mean queuing time for a customer. So the mean time, this formula is given in the formula book. So for the mean time here, the expectation of x, we're just using the formula that this is the integral for our domain. 0 to 9 here of f of x times x so x f of x with respect to x okay so we need to take our f of x times it by x do the integration between 0 and 9 and then that's our mean queuing time here okay so let's start doing that again I'm just going to use linearity with the k obviously we know what the value of k is um, so we won't worry about it too much but just to make life a bit easier so this is going to be k, um, sorry, if I put my integral in here, between 0 and 9. So that x at the front there becomes an x squared, so it's 81 times x squared. So just make it clear what I'm doing here. Obviously we need to times f of x by x. So if f of x at this point is x, okay, 81 minus x squared, x f of x, I've just times x by x there, so I get x squared, 81 minus x squared like so, 
Okay, so that gives me 81x squared and minus x to the fourth. And we're integrating this with respect to x. So here now, just integrating this, uh, we know what k is, so we won't worry about that too much. We'll just times it through by that in a second. So in this case, I get k lots of 81. So add 1 to the power divided by the new power. Divided by 3 minus x to the 5 divided by 5. Okay, like so. So now I just need to plug my limits in here um, and then times by k. Okay, remember k is given in part a. So what I'm going to get here is 4 over 6, 5, 6, 1 times. So plugging in my limits now, 9 and 0. So the 0 again will be 0 for both parts. So I just need to plug the 5 in here. So 81 times 5 cubed um, divided by 3 and then minus 5 to the 5, uh, sorry, 9 to the 5 divided by 5. And 9 cubed there. Um, turns out I can't read. So plugging them in separately, what you should get here is 19,683 minus 11,809.8. Okay, and if you do this, what you should get is exactly the expectation of x, the mean queuing time, is 4.8. Okay, so 4.8 minutes there. So clearly the answer should make sense. It should be between 0 and 9. If we get an answer bigger, something's gone wrong. And if we get an answer smaller, again, something's gone drastically wrong. So I always use a bit of common sense with your answer. Um... But there we go, 4.8 minutes seems reasonable. So that's part B. For part C now, we want to find the probability that a customer will queue for more than five minutes. So let's just clear all this, we've got a bit more room. So if we're looking for the probability that a customer will queue for more than five minutes, in that case, we don't care about zero to four minutes, we just care about everything past five. Okay, so we require probably x is larger than 5. So that means 5 minutes, 6 minutes, 7 minutes, 8 minutes, 9 minutes. Okay. So if it's larger than 5, that means we're going to integrate now from our new lower limit here, which is 5, up to our original uh, top limit there of 9. So we're integrating now our original expression. So if I put my k to the front here, 81x minus x cubed with respect to x. Okay, we're going to integrate this, times it by k, and obviously we should get a number between 0 and 1. So let's start doing that. It's going to be k lots here of 81x squared. So this we've already done this integration here over 2. That's x to the 4 over 4. And 9 and 5. So we need to plug our limits in now. So this is going to be k lots of 6, 5, 6, 1 over 4. So that's when I plug the 9 in. Now plug in the 5 in, and what you get here is 856.25. So if you do k, so what I've got here is 4 over 6, 5, 6, 1 times by this bracket here. We do this, what you should get here, the probability is 0.478 or something, you know, equivalent or very, very close to that, depending on your rounding. So 0.478 is the probability that a customer will queue for more than five minutes. Okay, so there we go. So that's that question done. Hopefully not too bad. Um, I think that's, that serves as quite a nice introduction. Let's take a look at another question. This one is just a standard application of formulas here. So we've got our question and our PDF here. Again, the context is pretty boring. It's just to do with the weight of um, staples in a bin full of paper. So our PDF is given here. So 9x minus 3x squared all over 10 between 0 and 2. So remember, to find the expectation of x, we just integrate our PDF over its domain. And then we times it by x. So x f of x, integrate this with respect to x. 
So what would that be here? Well, I'm going to write this separately. So what I mean by that is I'm going to split it up first as 9x over 10 minus 3x squared over 10. And then this is f of x. We need to times each one by x. So this is going to be now the integral between 0 and 2 of 9x squared divided by 10 minus 3x cubed over 10 as well. Okay. All with respect to x. So we just need to start performing this integration here. So add 1 to the power divided by the new power. So it's going to give me 9x cubed over 30 minus 3x to the 4 divided by 40 there. Okay, this integration should be pretty standard. It's just standard A-level integration. But if this is something you find tricky, go and revise your A-level integration, um, or your A-level mass integration. You'll find this topic a lot easier. So it's between 0 and 2. So now to plug in my limits here, um, and see what we get. So if I plug everything in, what you should get here is 1.2. Okay, so I won't bother just plugging in my limits, but what you should get is 1.2 there for the average weight. So that's 1.2 kilograms, because that's what our uh, units are there, the weight, x kilograms. So the mean, 1.2 kilograms. How do we work out the variance of x? So to work out the variance of x, what we need to do here is work out the expectation of x squared. The expectation of the x squared. Very, very similar to the expectation of x. The only difference is, is instead of it being x f of x, it's now x squared f of x. So between 0 and 2 again, x squared f of x dx. So between 0 and 2, so remember we had 9x over 10 minus 3x squared over 10. So now, if I times it by x squared this time, it becomes 9x cubed over 10. And it also becomes 3x to the 4 over 10 there. Okay, so we now need to integrate this. So just like usual, add 1 to the power, divide by the new power here. That becomes 9x to the 4 over 5. And we also get minus 3x to the 5 divided by 50. Okay, this is between 0 and 2. So between 0 and 2. So I just need to plug my limits in here. And if we do that, what you should get here is 1.68. Okay, so 1.68, that's the expectation of x squared. But remember, we want the variance of x. So how do we work out the variance of x? Well, this should be a pretty standard form that you're aware of from A-level um, statistics, or A-level math statistics, and further starts one. So the variance of x is just defined as the expectation of x squared minus the expectation of x all squared. Why so? The expectation of x squared we've just worked out is 1.68. And then we're going to subtract the expectation of x, which was 1.2, all squared, like so. So punch this into your calculator, see what you get. Um, and if you do that, you should get 0 0.24 there for the variance of x. Okay, so that's question 7 done there. Um, technically question 2 in the video. 8 marks in total, hopefully not too bad. So make sure you can do these two parts at the very least. Being able to find the expectation and the variance comes up pretty much every year. Um, so it's kind of a key skill there. So hopefully that one's not too bad. Let's take a look at one more question here. Three parts to it. Part 8, we're going to find the expectation of x. So this should hopefully become you know, pretty uh, straightforward at this point. Question 3, part A. Let's find the expectation of x. Remember, we just use the formula of the integral between its domain, so 1 to 4 of x, f of x. Okay. You can agree on that with respect to x. So in this case, um, it's up to you. You can take the 1 over 9 out if you want. I'm just going to keep it in there. Um, 
So what I've got here is 4 over 9 x minus x squared over 9. Okay, that's f of x if I was to expand it. So if we times that by x, I get 4 over 9 x squared and I get minus x cubed over 9. Like so. So all we need to do now is start integrating this. So 4 over 9 x cubed, sorry, x squared minus x cubed over 9. This is what we're looking to integrate here. So add 1 to the power, divide by the new power like always. So what I get here is 4 over 27 x cubed minus x to the 4 divided by uh, 27 there. Uh, should it be 27? It should be 36. I can't do maths. Or 36. Okay. This is between 1 and 4. Alright, so, so now all we need to do is plug our limits in here um, and calculate this. If we do that, what you should get here is 9 over 4. Okay, if you plug the limits in correctly there. So that's the expectation of x. I won't bother plugging the limits in just for the sake of saving time here. Um, but it should be pretty straightforward, hopefully. So 9 over 4 there um, for our expectation of x. Part B, we want to find the probability that x is larger than 2.5. So remember, the, the domain is between 1 and 4. So if we want the probability that x is larger than 2.5, we're just going to integrate f of x from 2.5 to 4. Okay. And this is part B here. So all we need to do is plug out f of x in with these limits. Calculate the integral and then just plug the limits in. So what would I get here? Well, f of x, um, that's our original that we have at the top. So this is 4x over 9 minus x squared over 9. So add 1 to the power, divide by the new power here. So that gives me 4x squared so just put it in square bracket. So that'd be 4x squared over 18 minus x cubed over 27 there. Our limits are 2.5 to 4. So plug these limits in correctly. And what you should get here is 3 over 8. And again, that's what we should expect. We should expect we being a probability a number between 0 and 1. Again, number bigger than 1, we've made a mistake somewhere. Smaller than 1. Again, we've made a mistake somewhere. So always use a bit of common sense for these questions. Nothing changes. Everything should make sense still. And then finally for part C, two matters for this part. So we're told that a radio runs using two of these batteries, of which both must be working. So two fully charged batteries are put into the radio. We want to find the probability that the radio will be working after 25 hours of use. So if you notice, X is in tens of hours. So this x being larger than 2.5 is technically what we just want to work out there um, for part c. That's what we want to know, because that gives us 25 hours of use. So if we want to know what's probably that two of them are working, all it's simply going to be is this probability here squared. Okay, so it's just going to be probability both batteries working. That's simply going to be 3 over 8, because that's the probability of success, times another probability of success, 3 over 8. So that's going to be 9 over 64 there. Okay, you can give any equivalent expression, but 9 over 64 is sufficient there. And there we go, so that's the end of that question. And that brings us to the end of this video. So I hope this has helped. Um, like always, if there's any mistakes, which there probably is somewhere, or if there's anything that's unclear, just leave a comment down below. Cheers.